In this section, we're going to be talking about exploit types and operations. We're going to be talking about things such as privilege escalation and maintaining access and covering your tracks for different types of operations that you'll be doing either during exploitation or post-exploitation. So let's get started. Here we're going to be looking at escalating our privileges or giving ourselves more rights than what we have when we first enter the system or systems. So why do we actually need to do this operation at all? It has a, a lot to do with the exploited application or service that, you're, that you've compromised does not have high enough privileges on the system, it has more escal so that you can do what you need to do. Now, the reason why you end up having to do that is because many times services are set up with service accounts or accounts that have limited privileges on the network and subsequent system for that matter. So what you have to do is you have to find a way to move from that current account or compromise and get yourself the rights that you need to get to in order to be able to do further exploitation of the system. This is part of what pen testers do. And then the other way, other reason why you have to escalate your privileges is a little bit more nuanced and it has to do with sometimes exploits, they don't provide enough stability or persistence on the compromised system or systems. So what happens is, is you manage to compromise a web server or compromise a database or, or whatever service that it may be, but it's using an actual fundamental flaw in that application or service. And in the process of actually performing that exploit, it destabilizes the system that you're working with. And because of that, it, system administrators may come along and reboot systems or reset the, the account so that it, or restart the service. And those will kick you out so that you no longer have a foothold and then you have to do the whole process again. So what you're attempting to do is move out of that particular process and into another one. That way, if they restart the service, that you still have a foothold on the network. And later, if you set a persistence, if they restart the machine, you still have a persistence type of access to the system. So let's take a look at a couple ways that we might be able to do that. And the first one would be to use the get system command. This is the first of the three ways you can escalate. Once you've got like a meterpreter uh, session and you do a get UID and you find out that you're running as just a regular account, you can try bardment technique, which is where you say use the get system command and the attempts to automatically escalate your privileges for you. The next command that you could possibly use, if that doesn't work, occasionally what will happen is you'll run get system and it says, I'm unable to do it. So you can run a PS command so you can print out the services and see what they are. Use the migrate command. And the migrate command when inside meterpreter moves a the meterpreter process from the current process that you're in to another process. And many times you're moving to another process and you can escalate at the same time, such as moving from like a web server process to say Explorer on Windows and you're running as NT system. If you, neither one of those work, there's a third option that's not always available to you, but you can use it on occasion. And that is, is that when you use a vulnerability or an exploit, the exploit is designed in such a way that it can run what we call multi, means that it can it can compromise a, a Windows, a Mac, a Linux. It's very generic. And if you use one of those, you may not be able to escalate your privileges because it's the exploit that it took advantage of or how it's tailored is doesn't understand the, necessarily the underlying operating system. However, sometimes that same exploit has modules or other payloads in it that are designed specifically for that operating system. So what you can do is back out one level, come back and rerun the same exploit, but tailored specifically towards, say, Windows. And once you get in, then it will auto escalate your privileges for you. So let's take a look at these three options and see what they look like as we execute them on systems. So over at our console, we see we already have a meterpreter session set up. We do a get UID. We see that we have Metasploitable as Vagrant. 
uh, that's not the ID that we want. So we're going to go ahead and run get system minus H just to see kind of what you have there. If you just run get system, it'll run all those options. So we're just going to do that. It's the easiest one to run rather than running the individual items. So we run get system and you can see that it already got it and it told you what how it got it, which is via the named pipe. Now, if we do the get UID, we've escalated our privileges from the vagrant ID to the NT authority system, our highest system. So now you can see that we have successfully used get system from our interpreter session. Now let's take a look at using the migrate function and move from one process to another. All right, we've got our exploit run. We do a get UID. We're already at the highest level authority. So technically we don't have to escalate privileges, but we want to move them in a form escalating. So if we do a sysinfo, we find out that this is a Windows machine and we'll be able to, from here, uh, see what process lists that we need because that's part of what migrate does is we need a process to migrate to. So we'll go ahead and run ps command and that will give us a list of processes. We're going to show the ones that are appropriate for this so you can see that there are several there. We'll even scroll up and kind of look at what we want. But primarily what we're after is we're going to be after the ones that are like explore that run commonly when the machine is either rebooted or any of those type of functions. So we're going to find our, ex our specific PID that we're running, which our current PID is 2424. We're going to highlight the PID that we want, which in this case is HTTPD, which is going to be 3728. So we're going to type in migrate, and then we're going to type in the numbers 3728 and hit enter. And what it will do is it will move that process from our current process into the other process. Now we've successfully migrated to the new process. Now we can do a get PID and we can see that we've moved there. Also, once you migrate a process from one to the other, you inherit some of the options that are available to that process that might not be available to another one. So in HTTP, it has access to the file system. We can run shell. And from here, we can see that we got a directory listing. We can migrate, move around on the file system. And you can also notice where the directory that it dropped you into was the actual Apache install in this case. So you know where you are in the operating system as far as that goes. We can move to the root of the file system. We can, we basically have full control over the system at this point. And we're running it out of the HTTP D process. And you've successfully seen how to use migrate. Now let's take a look at actually customizing or moving the right payload in so that you get what you need. So in this case, we'll do a get UID after we did the exploit. We see if the username is metasploitable. It's not re quite really what we want. So we're going to exit out of the interpreter at this point. Now we're going to take a little bit deeper look into the exploit that we were able to use. So we're going to go ahead and show our options again. And we can see that they're all set up with exploit th this particular instance. Now, if we do show info on a specific one, we can see that there might be some other stuff, some other vulnerabilities, other CVEs that are available, along with targets. This is important because now you can see there's a Java, a Windows, and a Linux. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it from a multi or a generic one, which is what we're using right now, the exploit multi, and we're going to actually use the one specifically for Windows. So we set our target at one, which was what it showed up at the top. And now we do our show payloads. And we can see now when it comes back for payloads, they're specific to Windows. So now we're going to go ahead and set our payload for another reverse TCP, but for Windows specifically. So we do set payload forward slash interpreter forward slash reverse TCP. Hit enter. We do our show options just to make sure everything's all set. Looks to be, and you can see our ID now is a Windows Universal instead of just a Java Multi. And then we go ahead and run this exploit. And now it's deploying the payload like it did just before 
except this time when we do get UID, we're now using the NT authority system or the highest level of privilege. Now you've seen how to back out of an interpreter session, get info on the actual exploit, and then go ahead and rerun the exploit with a tailored version of it for that operating system to escalate your privileges.